Hello everyone, John Frausto with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis of Leighton Hewitt's two-hand backhand. He had a phenomenal career. He was actually the youngest male to ever achieve the number one ranking in the world. He did that at age 20 and eight months and 26 days. Phenomenal athlete. He won the 2001 U.S. Open and the 2002 uh, Wimbledon Championships. Won 30 career titles and three doubles titles. So he could play uh, singles and doubles. So he had the net game to back up. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. All right, so currently um, got him in the contact or just before contact in both videos. I've got a, a side view um, in the first video and then on the second one we actually have something from the, fr uh, from the front side at an angle. So I thought this would give us good perspective on how he creates this stroke, what makes it truly unique and there are some, um, some things that he does that are unique but then some of the things that are very similar to other pros on the tour. So let's go ahead and take the video back to his ready position and the first thing I want to point out is his grips. So he's in a semi-western grip with the left hand and then his bottom hand is in a continental grip. So standard for a lot of the two hand backhands, nothing really unique here. But one thing I want you to look at is his take back. So notice his hand position and what he does is as soon as he sees the incoming ball, the hands will drop down. And what I've done in, in another video is I've talked about this take back. It's, it's like a pendulum take back where the hands are here and then they drop. And the reason why the pros do this, I feel it's uh, a little bit more simplistic less moving parts. It also generates momentum, helps with the timing, and he utilizes gravity on the, on the downswing. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and progress the video and notice right away how from here, the hands start dropping in both videos. So there's that initial movement, hands drop, and now he starts working on that unit turn. And the way we really prep the racket here, and we've talked about this before, is that we use the hips and shoulders, right, to kind of prep the racket. But once again, notice the take back here, how the racket starts high, and then it'll start coming down low and then up again. So this is that pendulum take back that I talk about. And I love this type of take back. I'll show you a video of Ferdasco, how he's a little different than, than Hewitt. So, there's, it's different strokes for different folks. There's different ways to make contact with this ball, right? Leighton Hewitt uses this pendulum take back. And notice how he uses those hips and shoulders to get into this loading position here. So I like this take back. I really like it. I'd be interested in your thoughts. Is this the type of take back you use? What type of take back are you using? Are you using more of a loop? Are you using a straight take back or are you utilizing the pendulum take back? The other thing I want to point out here is notice how his elbows are in a, he, he's in a straight position with both. Some will use a straight arm and a bent with the back. He uses a straight arm for both of his arms when he, with, the, with the take back. So here he is, he drops drops the racket, comes high. Here's his loading phase, and it's just a beautiful signature loading phase. Let's look in this video here, and notice how he's got that chin looking right over that right shoulder. And like we've talked about, whether it's a one-hander or a two-hander, we wanna see that shoulder blade. You wanna prep and show that shoulder blade and get that racket head and those hands to the inside of the ball. So great position here. Racket head is high. Look at how he's different though in this position. Know how his, notice how his racket face is open. I've shown a video, I've done a video analysis on Djokovic. He really closes that racket face. Leighton Hewitt actually, when he takes this racket back, his racket face is slightly open. You can see it in this video as well. Slightly open. All right, let's go ahead and progress the video. There's the momentum coming down then. That, this helps with the timing 
And now look at the gravity, one of the strongest forces on Earth. He starts utilizing that here and the racket drops just below the incoming ball. Let's look at the path here. So it's not a substantial uh, incline here. He is definitely getting going low to high. One thing I like to, to teach, want you to remember is to make sure you drop those hands below the incoming ball. One way to reference a good position here before contact is the hands are below the elbows, the hands are below the ball, the racket head should be slightly below the hands. So you kind of reference it that way. This is a great way to go from low to high on the ball and generate that top spin. So notice how his racket head is slightly below his hands in this position. Then the hands will be slightly below the ball. Great way to reference um, you know how to generate top spin in this position. So signature position here. The one thing that he doesn't do as much, and I'm going to show some video of like Verdasco. Look at the lag. He doesn't get a lot of lag with his stroke. I mean, there's a slight lag. I mean, he is relaxed with the grip, but he doesn't really have a lot of lag with his stroke, as you, you know, compared to some of the other pros that we see on the tour. So very simple, very clean not real aggressive with his with his approach to the ball as far as top spin i mean he is coming low to high so he is generating some top spin, but more so of a flatter ball look at the racket angle just before contact how it is slightly open here but he is further back if we look at this video here he is further back in the court uh, so maybe opening that face slightly just so he gets a little bit more net clearance and more depth Let's look at the contact and look at the extension here. Gets really, really, I mean, substantial extension here, how he's really reaching out. So he is going up and across the ball, but then he is getting great extension here. And then he finishes up and across the shoulder. So there's a reason why he's one he's the youngest player ever to be number one in the world. Uh, he's got very good strokes. He's got an alt court game. He's won doubles titles and singles titles got great hands and uh, so and someone to emulate potentially uh, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the not notification bell so you get uh, updates on f future vi uh, videos and uh, thank you so much for watching have a great day